Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Yoga for Mother's Day. So whether you're doing this on Mother's Day or any other day of the year, we know you deserve it. Come and join me on your mat. Okay, so go ahead and either sit on your sitting bones or grab something like a blanket or a towel to sit up on and find yourself as comfortable as possible. And let's just let kind of the external world melt a little bit away and come into this inhale and this sigh through the mouth. Do that again, inhale. Let it out. Bring your hands together to your heart and set an intention, whatever it is that you need. Maybe you need more patience. <laughs> Maybe you need more self-care. Here you are. Whatever it is, find that. Take another full breath in. This time as you exhale, interlace your fingers and round your spine. Press the palms away, round. Inhale, lift the arms up. You can separate the hands if the interlacing is a bit much. Then exhale, float your arms down. Then roll your shoulders back and down a few times. Ooh, get into that tension. <laughs> Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Interlace the fingers, press the palms away. Exhale, round again. Press forward, drape the tail, drape the head. Inhale, come all the way up. Remember, you can let go of the interlacing. And exhale, float the arms down and take those shoulder rolls again. And hey, we know we need to get into the neck. So let's drape the head to one side. If you wanna add a hand on there, that's fine to add weight, but not a pull. You really wanna make this nice and easy. Thread your breath through it. Hand comes down to the leg and then roll your chin down diagonally and then to the heart center other diagonal and over to the other side. And then maybe place the hand there for a little bit of weight, but not again, that pulling or pushing. Breathing there. Roll back down one more ear to shoulder, hair in your face and ear to shoulder. Then hang the head back down towards the heart and one vertebra at a time, let the head rise up over the shoulders and sigh when you get there. So one thing that I know moms do, being a mom myself of a 13 year old boy, ooh, teenage years, very different. Um, we carry a lot of stuff. When they're babies, we carry a lot of stuff. Even when they're older, mom, can you hold this? Okay, so let's stretch. Um, the underside of the forearms. Take your fingertips towards the knees, reach your palms forward. You can decrease the stretch by making sure that the shoulders are right over the wrists. You can increase the stretch by tucking the toes and reaching the hips back. Make sure that you're still breathing. This should feel very awkward. It's not something we do very often, but it's really helpful for the hands, the wrists, the shoulders, and the forearms. Deep breath in. Exhale here, bring the fingertips forward and go to a child's pose. Elongate the arms, so walk the arms forward, reach the hips back and then slowly just shift your hips side to side. We'll bring a little more length into the breathing as we bring that length into the body. Rising to all fours, this time your fingertips are pointed forward, knees underneath the hips and bring your right set of toes to the floor, press through the heel, and now press forward and down with your hands as the hips come back. So you're opening through the calf muscles here, really delicious, through the lower leg. And then right knee comes down. Let's just take that to the other side. Tuck your left set of toes, press forward and down with the hands, shift your hips back and breathe. And you'll probably feel your triceps activate. The arms are working, of course, as you're pressing back. Continue your breath. And back to all fours. Now you can go directly into that child's pose again, or if you're ready to come a little bit more into the spine and hamstrings, come into your first downward dog and let's pedal it out as we're still being really sweet and slow and kind with the initiation of the stretch through the back of the legs. 
Lord knows, as mothers, we don't always get time for yoga, and we can get pretty tight in between. So lovingly, just without that judgment of like, oh, your legs are tight, you're not good, at, this isn't good enough. No, it's great. You're here to feel a stretch, you're healed, here to breathe, you're doing everything right. Bend your knees, let your heels lift. Draw your core musculature back, so draw more so the organs towards the spine, and then walk your hands back towards your feet. You can remove whatever propping you had out of the way, but if you do like a fold to have blocks or a chair or maybe, maybe shins, add whatever you need, and take a fold that's suitable for right now this moment of your life. Let's, get, let's actually take a wider stance and sway slightly side to side as if we don't have a care in the world. <laughs> I know that's not true, moms. I know we worry, but here, coming into a little bit of a respite. Fingertips down, turn your toes out and your heels in. Now, you're going to have to judge the degree that that works for you for this malasana, for this squat. And I always do recommend if you have a block or something to sit on, then add that up. Even if it's pillows, whatever feels best under your sitting bones to let this external rotation work in the hips without feeling like you're off balance. Breathing here, fingertips can be down or hands can be at the heart. Let's take a deep breath in and another sigh out. Fingertips down if they're not already, lift your hips, turn your toes forward and we'll add a little more work through the legs. So hinge at that hip crease, take your hips back. Make sure that you're not just in the front of the feet, but that you're anchoring the heels. Reach your arms back, loop the shoulder blades onto your back, and let's add a little pulse of the arms here. Lift the low belly off of the thighs slightly, so you're not just hanging out there. Three, two, one, press into the floor and slowly take your transition up, eventually reaching the arms, palms might touch, and bring them to your heart. Draw your breath in through your nose, and sigh out through the mouth, shake it out. Sometimes I think mom yoga just needs to be like <laughs> shaking it out, shaking off the clutter, and taking breaths and sighs. Let's go wide with the feet, and hands to the waist. Draw a circle. Now, if you're here and you're like, ooh, my feet are kind of too wide, which is sort of the feeling I'm getting, I'm gonna shorten that just a little bit and see if I can get into the hips differently. We're gonna go in both directions. So you can go in one and then the other. Whoop, <laughs> are you guys snap crackling and popping as well? And there's no problem with that, by the way, unless there's pain. Come to the center, inhale. Exhale, let your arms just dangle down. So imagine that you're just jello from the inner jaw all the way through the fingertips. Then lift your heart just a little more buoyancy there. Press through your legs slightly more actively. And now lift your arms out to the sides like they're just rising to the surface of water. And then when they reach that surface of water, put a little bit of energy from your heart through your fingertips. We'll move through the hips here, turning the left set of toes out, right set of toes slightly in, coming into warrior two. Now, if you need to take them a little more length here, feel free. Just as long as the hip isn't lower than the knee and you're not just hanging out in soft tissue. Press an anchor into the feet. Now use your in-breath, straighten the leg, reach the arms up, turn the toes. We're going directly to the other side, warrior two. We'll feel this in the hips, we'll feel this through the spine and the shoulders, keep breathing. Inhale, reach up, exhale, spin first side. Inhale, reach up, and transfer to the other side, warrior two. Inhale, reach. This time, exhale, fold in the middle. So this is where your chair or blocks or fingertips can be a nice option. If coming even further down makes sense for you because you have the spaciousness through the legs and the spine, feel free, but it's not a must. We're not competing with ourselves or anyone else. Just breathing, giving some sweetness to the back of the legs. 
Take the hands forward. Bring your right fingertips underneath you and your left hand to your waist. Now again, this can be on a chair or a block. Inhale, grow long out of the pelvis. Exhale, take a mini twist to the right. Instead of dropping the right side of the pelvis to help you turn, keep the pelvis a little more level and make this a little more axial through the spine so you're feeling it more work in the back. Hand doesn't have to come up, it might stay at the waist or it could. Roll the shoulders back, inhale is here. Exhale, come on down. Other side, uh, lengthening out of the, uh, excuse me, the pelvis. <laughs> and exhale, twist. Sometimes being a mom means being a little brain dead. And only lift that top arm if that makes sense for the shoulder girdle, for the neck. Inhale is here and exhale, come on down. Now, we did a squat earlier, Malasana, and that was a more of a passive squat. Now we're gonna come more active by turning the toes and knees out. It's roughly 45 degrees. Everyone's gonna be a little different, but the hips are still higher than the knees, even if it's by a little, not lower. So we're in this goddess squat or horse squat. Bring your hands to your heart. Press into the feet and start to feel what we just prepped for. So we did those external rotations in warrior twos, and now we're bringing external rotation into both. Inhale, reach the arms up as you straighten the legs. Exhale, hands through the heart, come back into that goddess squat. Inhale, sweep and lengthen. Exhale, landing and feeling grounded. Last one, inhale, open the shoulders, lengthen the side body. Exhale, coming into those hips. Breathe here. Exhale, mini twist to the left, keeping the spine high this time. Inhale, center, mini twist to the right. Inhale, center, and then slowly let the arms come down, straighten the legs. Woo. Turn the toes forward. Ooh, I'm squeaking on my new mat. Reach the arms to the sides. Now, some of us are gonna march and march. Okay, so let's just, everybody start that. Just march in and out. If you wanna work a little harder, make your march knees bent the whole time. If you want to add a hop and you have no issues in the spine or the knees, anything going on with the bones, then feel free to hop. That's gonna bring the heart rate up as well. Taking the arms out, inhale, land with soft knees, exhale, center, good. Inhale, out, exhale, center. Inhale, out, stay with it and just go to the pace that works for you, always landing with bent knees. Whenever I'm feeling low energy, these are great. They only take maybe even 15 seconds to get that heart rate up, increase my circulation, wake me up a little bit. Last one. And center. Whew. Shake off any clutter. I'm going to make the necessary changes to my leggings. Moms, we know you gotta make the changes to the leggings sometimes. Hands over your heart center. Palms facing down over the heart center. Unlock your knees. Unlock your breathing. Recognize that we can shift ourselves with very minimal time spent, even though it is a sort of a maximum amount of energy. Come on and join me at the top of your mat. Find mountain pose. Let the head come over the shoulders, over the pelvis, over the feet. Take a moment of appreciation for yourself all that you do, all the many hats that you wear. And through here, you can make your movement your own. So if you know vinyasa and you'd like to do that, you can, any variation. If you'd like to stay standing here or maybe just move to the fold, do that. Inhale, reach. Exhale, bend the knees any amount as you fold. Now some of us are gonna stay here. If you wanna carry along and do Ardha Uttanasana, halfway up, you can. Uttanasana, fold. Maybe come to a plank or a knees down plank. And moving through your version, maybe chaturanga, maybe today it's all the way to the floor, tops of the feet down, baby cobra. And there could be a child's pose in between, even modified with the toes tucked to open the toes and the arches as I'm doing. And downward dog. So even if you chose standing or that forward fold, let's join in the downward facing dog. 
Widen your stance to the outer edges of your mat and gently sway your hips side to side. Now as you do this, I want you to think that the hips are going to side to side, but the sitting bones are still pointing straight back. So instead of swaying so much, move your sitting bones still back to the wall behind you as you go side to side. This is beautiful for hamstrings, glutes, IT bands. Yes. Okay, second malasana. Heels turn in, we're gonna walk back again. Maybe adding height under the sitting bones, whatever you need, even if it's on a chair. Breathing. Coming into the back body a little bit more. Reach your arms forward. This is already going to increase what's happening there. A lot of us are gonna stay right there or even hands to the floor. If you want more, reach the arms up in any of that gray area in between in space and let the back body work with the paraspinal muscles, shoulder blades, deep breath in. Exhale, hands come down. This time we're gonna walk forward into a plank pose or knees down plank. In both of these poses, we are not letting the belly drop, but rather drawing the organs towards the spine. Breathe here, trust your strength. Three, two, and one. Lower the knees, come to your favorite child's pose, whether that's knees together or separated, and roll out through your wrists. Let any clutter go. Sometimes I think about my overthinking as pots and pans in my brain. And I just imagine all those pots and pans just whoosh, clamoring down, getting rid of them. <laughs> okay, downer facing dog, moms come into it. From here, look to the top of your mat. However it looks for you to get there, as long as it's safe, get there that way. Inhale, rise halfway up. Exhale, fold. Choose how you'd like to rise. Take your time getting there. And bring your hands to your heart. Deep breath in. And shake it out. Before we move on to adding on to what we did so that we have prepped completely, we're gonna do some twisting movement. Now, if this is enough, great. We're gonna take this. You don't have to take the arm all the way back, okay? So feet the comfortable distance apart for you. Hinge the hips back, bring your arms forward facing each other. From here, inhale. As you exhale, you can take your left hand to your waist and twist or left arm back behind you, palms facing the same direction. And then come on back. Inhale here. Exhale, open twist. Inhale back. And stand up, shake the legs out. Okay, so you can use whatever you breath, whatever you breath, <laughs> whatever you want with your breath. I'm gonna change it this one, okay? So follow along with the breathing or do your own. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, twist open. Exhale, forward. Inhale, other side. Exhale, forward. Inhale, all the way up to stand. And exhale, hands to the heart. Deep breath in. And let it go, pots and pans, <laughs> shaking them off. Okay, so just getting into the shoulders, the legs, and a little more heat with that. Again, the breath, you get to choose. So for the next movements, we're gonna go wide again with the feet. Remember, it doesn't have to be too wide. We'll go back into the warrior two, leading into Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon. You don't even have to do this pose. Don't let me or anyone else tell you what to do, especially on Mother's Day. You, you get to choose all the time. But if you know in Ardha Chandrasana or Half Moon, which looks like this, that you like to use a block under your hand, feel free to do that. We're gonna be go doing left side first. So bring your hands to your waist. Stand up tall and proud and breathe. We'll go back into that warrior two footing, left toes out, arms dangle. Let the arms rise up to that surface of water and then put that heart energy through them. So if some of us are gonna stay right here. You could even take a peaceful warrior instead of going to the Ardha Chandrasana. For those of us moving on, hop that back foot a little closer in and that back hand might be on the waist. We're gonna find the floor or the chair or the block and then bend that front knee to help lift the back leg that's already been activated straight and strong. For a lot of us, we're gonna keep gazing down for our balance. The block or a prop is 
diagonal of the pinky toe, not right in front. It'll be easier to balance if it's diagonal. And then roll the chest open any amount and maybe lift that top arm. Breathing here. If there are any other variations, movements you like to do, if there's a bind that you love here, maybe chapasana, feel free. But all of that stuff, if, it just, if it's just filler, don't do it. From here, and you might take your block with you, bend into that front leg, look down at the floor, back hand might be at the waist or reaching, come into your warrior two, nice strong transition. Switching the block if you're using it to the other side and placing it onto the ground for when you're ready. Setting up your legs for your warrior two, arms dangle down. Let that stress go. Let the arms then rise up. Reaching through, heart energy. Stay here or peaceful warrior. Maybe back hand to the waist, hop in a little bit. Find your stability with your prop or your fingertips and moving into that Ardha Chandrasana. Looking down, looking down first is going to set the balance. Then if you feel the balance is there, you can begin to look forward or up maybe lifting that top arm. So the gaze, if balance is off, probably should stay down, okay? And then if there's any other things you like to add on, blooming in and out, maybe finding a bind. I haven't really prepped you so much for the bind, so unless that's really part of your practice, I wouldn't do it. Leave your block behind, bend your front leg, land strongly in the transition to warrior two, and then, Toes forward, lower the arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale here. And like we started, exhale, round the spine, press the palms away, bend the knees. Inhale, come to stand. Fingers can stay interlaced or not. Exhale, float the arms down. Again, like we started, inhale, reach up. Other finger might interlace in front, press the palms away or just reach. Exhale, bend the knees round the spine like you're a tur you have a turtle shell on the back. Inhale, slowly straighten everything up, reach up. And exhale, float the arms down, rolling those shoulders. All right, and then from here, come to seated however that feels right to you. If you like to use some of that core work, hip work, leg work to kind of come on down slowly, that's fine. Or guess what? You can just be like this and I'm there. <laughs> Take that same uh, prop from the start of class that helped you find some height under your sitting bones, place that beneath you and sit up tall. And let's once again find the breath. Cannot tell you how many times through parenting, finding the breath has been the thing that saved me. <laughs> I'm sure you're nodding your heads. The more we can find that breath, sometimes it stops us in our tracks of reaction. We take a moment, we pause, we decide how we want to react, and then we react. <laughs> We're not perfect, but the more we rely on the breath, the more you know, right? All right, deep breath in, sigh out. Lay one ear towards one shoulder, soften. If you wanna add that weight again, feel free. Lose the hand if it was there, move to the other side. Maybe place the hand. Keep breathing, shoulders relaxed. Hand comes down to the leg, maybe a few rock and rolls. If you wanna go all the way around, Feel free if that bothers the back of the neck, just kind of go shoulder to shoulder. And then one vertebra at a time, let the head come all the way back up and sigh out. Bring one leg to your inner thigh and the other leg out. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit sideways here, a little diagonal. Take the flesh of the sitting bones back. Lean towards that front leg a little bit more, breathe here. If the body is saying yes to more of a lean and a reach, then go for it. If the body is saying no, maybe back off. Maybe again, rely on the breath. Don't let the reaction be, I have to get my nose onto my leg because 
there's no rule that says that. And that might even be problematic or painful, so we don't want that. Breathing wherever you are, coming into full acceptance of the moment of, yes, there's tension here. Yes, this might not be something I do all the time, but I'm here now, so how can I be of service, of service to myself uh, in this moment? Come all the way up and just easily, gently switch sides. You might have to, again, pull the flesh of the sitting bones back, engage the front leg, leaning in. So I happen to know that this side is my tighter side. So I need more patience, more breath, and probably more time on this side if I ever want to be fully balanced. So I usually spend more time on my right side to increase the feeling of balance between my left and my right. Breathing here. So in the ways that we would be so loving and treat our family, may we also be that loving in the way that we treat ourselves. Releasing, wiping away judgment after judgment, critique after critique. And coming all the way up, let's bring both legs forward and just shake them out, roll the toes around, move the ankles, shake out whatever it needs to, and we'll come down onto our back bodies. Have your, in fact, you can actually roll it now. If you have a prop to roll or if you have a pillow or something, you can have that near you to put under your knees in a moment. We're gonna come down onto our backs, hug the knees in, elongate that lumbar, rock side to side. From here, we will take my favorite twist that really helps the shoulders. So come on to one side that you can see me on, because you only have to see me for the first side. You'll know what's going on for the second side. And then stack your hands palm on palm, like this, right out in front of the shoulder. Let that top hand start to graze the earth in a semicircle all the way up and back behind you until you open into a T position or even cactus arms, depending on what the shoulders want, in that twist breathing. Check in with the neck and the jaw, make sure you're not over tensing there. And then what I like to do is sometimes continue the movement up and over, over and back. Up and over, and I would go even slower than I'm showing you over, up, and back. We'll land where we started, hand over hand, and then we'll come on to our backs and go directly to the other side. So again, you don't have to see me come into that sort of fetal position, top hand over, lower hand, and then just drag your fingertips up and over into that semicircle, opening through the pecs, the shoulders, the spine, the hips. And you can stay there and breathe. You can take as many of these journeys to the hand and back away into the twist as you like. Just let yourself drift on the breath. Be less precise be less about the idea of perfection. Let this time work for you. Soften the neck and jaw. We'll land with that top hand coming back up and over, landing on the lower hand, and then back to hugging everything in. Keep the right knee in, extend the left leg, press the left leg away, draw the right knee in. Slowly switch, draw the left knee in, press through the right heel, breathing here. This is great for press, pressing on the ascending and descending colon, pressing, alternate. That's good for elimination and back and forth. Also great for the hips. One more time. Hug the knees in, and then, well, it wouldn't be Mother's Day without a happy baby. <laughs> so
So we're either gonna modify that by just letting the knees kind of fall into the hands and holding here and letting that be enough groin stretch, which for a lot of us it absolutely is. Or you can take your shins more parallel like we did more in our Malasana, or actually more our Goddess, and grab the ankles, the shins, the outer feet, and you can of course add movement or you can stay still and let the breath be the movement. Breathing, no matter which option you've chosen, they're all good options. Just like they're all good, they're all good kids. They're just kids. Ah, even if you are a mom and your kid has already left the nest, you're still a mom. You still need this, they're still our babes. Rock a little side to side. Although we have to you know, let them fly, we just love them so much. Bring the soles of the feet down, hands down, long side of the body, baby lift up the pelvis here. Just opening a little bit through the hip flexors. If you wanna go a little higher, you can, but let's not force. If the hand position changes to interlacing or kind of robot arms, palms facing, feel free. Sometimes I just like to, you know, play the drums on my stomach. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, come on down. Give yourself a big hug, maybe lift the shoulders and the head, and then release it all down. Now here's where you might place that luxurious lift behind the knees and thighs, which really can help the lumbar release and also just prevent hyperextension in the legs. Breathing here, arms where you want them. You need more of a shoulder opener, they might come more back into cactus or stacking the palms. Whatever it is that you need over what you want. So try to make the choice of your postures when you're in yoga, more what you need, less what you want. And then I feel that we'll, we're all more kind of better served because we take the ego out of it more, that want, and put it into what would really benefit us. And it might not be something that we're good at, but something we need. So I'd like you to rest here, and I'm just going to share one more thing as you rest. It is the moms that I know who give themselves time to rest and recuperate, who I see, if I'm making that judgment of like a good mom, who I see as fantastic parents because they're filling their cup and they have more to offer. They're more renewed. So sometimes we can be, you know, kind of almost like martyrs where we're like, I said yes to that and that and that and that. And I did all these things, but then we're so depleted and burned out and our, our kids are going to see that and we're not going to be able to give of ourselves as fully or show ourselves as human beings who care for themselves to role model that for the kids. So I'm sure you all know that and it's easier said than done, but I do appreciate that you took time for yourself. Please continue to take time, even if it's, you know, doing that twist, even if it's jumping for 15 seconds to change your attitude or your mood or your heart rate, whatever it is, give yourself some time. You deserve it. I appreciate you. If you liked this, please like, subscribe, and have a beautiful day. Namaste.